I'm starting out on day four of my journey sailing moonlight up the Great Sandy Strait beside Fraser Island from Inskip Point up to Harvey Bay. It's a journey of about 40 nautical miles in total and today we're going to cover the final 15 nautical miles from the ranger station at Angoa to Urangan. The Ceratodus was built as a dredge at Paisley in Scotland around about 1898. She measured 145 feet long, had a 30 foot beam and weighed in at 406 tonnes. During the 1940s, the Ceratodus carried 98% pure white silica sand from Yankee Jack Creek on Fraser Island to the mainland. Now she's one of several rusting hulks that were beached on the west coast of Fraser Island over the years. Not far up the coast from Yankee Jack Creek, we come across a derelict jetty which is left over from the days when the locals on Fraser Island used to travel from this point back across to the mainland. In the background you can see a nice little camping ground. There's also a boat shed there and some buildings that were built for the forestry activity which ceased in about 1991. Nowadays it's been taken over by the National Parks and Wildlife Service. No wind today for the final leg of the journey, so it's all done by motor. After a little while you get tired of the motor clattering away in the background. So I lash off the helm and I can stand up beside the mast and actually steer the boat. Increasing the waterline on that side by heeling over the boat decreases the resistance and therefore the boat steers away from the side that you're leaning to. Fraser Island was named after Captain James Fraser. He perished on the island in 1836. His ship, the Stirling Castle, ran aground on the 25th of May 1836 on the Swain Reef near Rockhampton. He and his wife Eliza, along with the remaining crew, set out south, heading towards Moreton Bay, now um, called Brisbane, in two lifeboats. Eliza was heavily pregnant and gave birth to a child while underway. The baby, unfortunately, did not survive. One of the lifeboats was abandoned on the way, and the remaining boat eventually landed at Kagari, now known as Fraser Island. After camping for a few days, they were taken into the camps of the local Butchula people. Fraser died while in captivity, but his crew and later his wife were rescued in March of 1837. Kigari, or Fraser Island, is a heritage listed sand island separated from the Australian mainland by the Great Sandy Strait. The island is made up of 98% white quartz sand. It has been shaped over millennia by the wind and the sea into nearly 200 miles of beaches and 1,600 square miles of forested dunes. The dunes rise 800 feet above the sea level. It is thought that the population of Kigari reached up to 2,000 Butchula people during the times of plenty. Captain Cook first spotted the Butchula people in 1770 as he sailed past. They were standing on a high point on the east coast of the island named Indian Head. A brash red-headed American timber getter going by the name of Yankee Jack Piggott began harvesting carry pine on the island in 1864. The first bullocks hauled the timber to the western shore where it was rafted across the Great Sandy Strait into the Mary River to be processed in a steam-driven sawmill at Maryborough. In 1905, a steam tramway was built across the island from the southeast to the northwest to avoid the elevator sections. Sparks from the steam engines are thought to have started many bushfires.
So we're coming to the end of our journey now, having transited across the Great Sandy Strait and are entering the Susan River near Urangan. Logging operations on Kigari came to a halt in the early 1990s, so we now have this rich heritage. The Bachelor people spread the message of care and respect for the land. Visitors to the island are greeted with a sign carrying a welcome written by Uncle Malcolm Burns. Good day, welcome. Bachelor people, traditional owners of Kigari, welcome you to country. May all your good spirits be around you. Throughout the day, wherever you go, leave only footprints. We've arrived back in the mouth of the Susan River near Urangan. We're just taking a bit of a look around the bay before we take the boat out of the water. This is the place where the ferries depart for Kingfisher Bay. Those words, leave behind only footprints, are echoing in my mind. We have left behind a few footprints and we've also left behind some ripples. And the other thing that we've taken away from the island are some wonderful memories. <laughs>